Turn to your left, hold your hands above your head, hold still for 10 seconds. Just as I suspected, trying to sneak an Allen key through. Hey everyone, I've been working on this project for a while. This is a X-ray backscatter imaging system, uh, very popular in airports these days. And this works on the principle that if you shoot X-rays at something, uh, some of the X-rays will penetrate through the object, some will be absorbed, and some will be backscattered or reflected off. And if you catch the backscattered reflection, you can make an imaging device like this, uh, just like is used in airports. One of the problems with imaging things with x-rays is that we don't have uh, the equivalent of a lens for x-rays. So for a standard light-based camera, we can just use a piece of glass uh, to make a lens and that will focus the light rays down onto the film or the sensor. But with x-rays, it doesn't work that way. We don't have a material that can bend x-rays like we do uh, for light rays. So an alternative way to build an imaging device is to scan a very thin beam of x-rays across the object that we want to image and then use a very large detector to catch the backscatter, which is how this system is built. This wheel here has four very small slots cut, cut in it. The slots are about 40 thousandths of an inch uh, width and, and height, and the x-rays are generated here in a tube, and the x-rays go through that very thin channel, which causes them to come out like a beam like this. So the x-rays come out of this disc in a, in a beam here, and as the disc spins, the x-ray beam moves in an arc like this across the field of view of the imaging device. To catch the backscatter, I have a very large detector here. This is built with a phosphor screen inside used in uh, x-ray uh, film cassettes. And then I have a photomultiplier tube here that detects the light from the phosphor screen. So what happens is the x-rays come out of the, uh, of the tube, hit the object, backscatter, hit the screen here, which turns into a very dim uh, light source, and the light source is collected by this photomultiplier tube, which is really just a very sensitive uh, photo detector device. From here, the electrical signal is channeled into a very simple op-amp circuit, and then into my oscilloscope. And the oscilloscope shows the uh, intensity of the signal coming back from this detector as the intensity on the screen of the oscilloscope. The beam is scanned across the oscilloscope screen at a rate that matches the, the rotational speed of my chopper disc, which is about 330 RPM for this uh, example here. And then I also measure the Y position of the uh, X-ray emitter device with a simple potentiometer, and that controls the vertical movement. In order to make an image, I just use a very long shutter on my camera, just aimed at the oscilloscope screen. And for now, all I've been doing is moving the x-ray head by hand just to scan the image uh, very quickly. Obviously, a better way to do this would be to have a worm gear or something drive the, the x-ray head up and down at a very smooth, controlled rate. But I just wanted to get this working quickly, so I decided to just push it by hand. Most of the x-rays are contained within this device by this lead shield here, and only a very, very thin uh, beam makes it through the shield, and then an even thinner beam makes it through the chopper wheel. So the amount of x-ray actually coming out of this device is very, very small. You can see how the detector works. If I wave a plastic rod in front of the device with the wheel not spinning and the detector running, uh, you can see the output on the oscilloscope change as the plastic rod moves through the beam. Uh, the beam has a size of about maybe a quarter inch, about a foot and a half away from the uh, x-ray source. I spaced the uh, slots in the chopper wheel 90 degrees apart because I eventually want to do a much wider field of view. Currently this tube is limited to 25 degrees total angle, and so I'm not really using the device's full capability. In fact, most of the time it's not even emitting x-rays, so it, it would be a much more efficient device to have uh, eight slots cut in it if I didn't need the field of view. Um, but I have some other tubes that I want to put in there that have uh, a wider field, so I wanted to leave that option open. Currently, the entire scan um, across the field of view takes about 12 to 15 milliseconds. The position of the disk is sensed with a simple opto sensor, and this just triggers a delayed scan on the scope so that the uh, left and right margin of the image lines up with the left and right edge of the screen. This system is very comparable to airport scanners in terms of 
beam size, um, radiation dose, scan speed, time, and all of that. And um, I got a lot of my information from a patent, which I'll link to in the description. And that had quite a lot of useful info uh, just regarding like pixel size and count and line count and all that kind of stuff. As usual, I ended up getting most of these parts on eBay. Uh, the photo multiplier, the x-ray tube, um, the power supplies for the x-ray. All of the machining for this project was done here, and I spent uh, a good portion of this week doing the machining, which was quite extensive. Um, doing precision rotary motion is, is not easy, and I ended up uh, positioning this, this rotating wheel, kind of like the wheel on a car, where it has a, a taper bearing and a thrust bearing. I guess most cars would have two taper bearings squeezed together. In this case, I didn't really need quite that much uh, radial load support, so I just did one taper bearing and a, and a thrust bearing. I might do another video about this in the future, so let me know if you have any questions and I'll try to address all of them in the next video. There's kind of a lot to talk about here and hopefully I'll have a, a better performing system after a few additions. Okay, see you next time. Bye.